In this configuration, I have red, green, blue going to A, B, and C of the 292, and I have the, uh, let's go to CV, I have red going to oscillator 1, green to oscillator 2, blue to oscillator 3, and those are respectively going to the A, B, and C of the 292 as well, so it's straightforward, simple uh, sequences. And you're used to now programming a single ring. I've programmed three rings. In order to get there, you need to be, if these are blinking or something like that, you need to get it down to, I want the inner ring to be five. Uh, if that was there, for instance, I want that green middle ring to be seven. And if this was over here somewhere, I bring that down, I want that to be nine. So engage your clocks first and then go to edit and scroll through uh, you know your rings to set them. I now just have even pulses on all three rings and I just have a whole tone scale uh, set up uh, in uh, the CVs. So let's go to red on five. We have a little whole tone scale there. And same things for seven, ring seven and ring nine. Uh, we take edit off. I have this set to sync on one, which means as this achieves one, the other two rings are going to go faster so they can finally catch up and hit one at the exact same time that does. If we go to on cycle, they all go around at the same pulse, but they take as long as they take to go around 7, 9, and 5. So they're continually shifting phase, if you will. And currently they're on combo in the 292, I'm sorry, they're in uh, gate on the 292. I'll take one out and go into combo. And another. And another. And back to on one. Another thing that's interesting is as far as pulses, oh, while we're here, notice that there's nothing programmed in control voltages 4 through 6. That's the way you can tell. And I don't have any subdivisions going on. When I hit this the next time, all lights will light up and I'll show you basically everything. Um, it would be hard to sort of sort that out. Pulses. Since I have pulses in all, every ring, that's going to be the same as CV in every ring. So go to, back to pulses. Uh, one thing I can do here, if we're in edit, I can clear these by going to make sure the red button's on, hit clear. And now if the red's on and I hold edit, it's going to... Whoopsies. Okay, let's try that again. Edit. Hold the red button and hit edit. It just randomly chooses some pulses. If I go to 7, uh, let's clear that. Hold the green button and hit edit. Pick some more random pulses. Each time I hit edit, it gives me different set of random pulses. So you can play around there until you get a pattern you like. And we'll do the same thing for circle 9. Let's clear them. Oops. Wrong. There we go. Hold the blue, hit edit. Oh yeah. 
sure. Let's see what that all sounds like. So now the whole tone scale is still happening, but we're just going to get random pulses. Oops, I disengaged that one. There we go, we're back. Okay, see you next video. Here's a handy little trick. I've programmed circles three, four, and five. And in circle three on the third cell, I've programmed a control voltage, which goes over here to the CV in and bumps this up to circle four. And the way I get it to freeze on circle four or hold on circle four is by using cell one. Cell one in any time, no matter what circles in play, when it hits cell one, it'll send a pulse out, and you can use that to trigger various things. In this case, I'm just triggering it to start scanning up the circles. So I have an ascending pattern in a pitch pattern, and it's the second, the penultimate cell always sends a CV, which you'll see these lights start to move up, and then when it hits one, in the very next cell, it freezes it. Let's see if we can take a look at that. Okay, it takes some dialing in, um, but it's totally doable, and of course you could do this for the entire um, set of 11 rings. Okay.